Francis Keeper, and welcome to On Air. Today, we look at Tuesday's launch of Direct Sending Live's Politics 2012. It's the very first project ever in the history of direct selling that looks at engaging distributors so that they can talk about politics as it impacts direct selling. There are four special bloggers, Avon superstar Lisa Wilbur representing the Libertarians, Gene Bronstein representing the Liberal Progressives, Kelly Foote, the Tea Party Republicans, and Ruth Webster representing the Independents. Ruth Webster is a distributor with Soul Purpose Lifestyle Company. That's going to be on, on air today. And also, we look at our upcoming special report for next week, Race in Direct Selling, called Direct Selling Skin, Race, It's Only Skin Deep. A fascinating look at what's going on and where we need to go. I'll be right back on On Air. No family can survive on two incomes anymore, let alone one. If you are supplementing your family's income working from home, then tune into The Cash Flow Show, Direct Sales Radio. Host Deb Bixler brings you sales tips, lead generation systems, and best business practices that guarantee direct sales success. Whether you're looking for a little extra cash or a career change, The Cash Flow Show, Direct Sales Radio, will give you proven systems that will work in your home business. The Cash Flow Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time on World Talk Radio Variety. Welcome back to On Air. Well, the presidential election season is officially in full swing. After last week's Iowa caucuses and, of course, last night's New Hampshire primary, it's really on. As we sit back and watch the Republicans battle it out to see who's going to be their nominee to go up against President Barack Obama. Now that we're into this presidential election season, it's now time for Direct Selling Live to get involved. Last night, this past Tuesday, Direct Selling Live launched its Politics 2012. It's a huge upgrade from what we did in 2008, where we only did a four-part expose on politics and its influence in direct selling. What we did, we looked at the politics and its influence in direct selling as it relates to associations, as it relates to companies, as it relates to distributors, and then we kind of put the whole thing together. We also did some major polling to find out of the direct and live community, and then we were able to extrapolate from there, find out what is the, the, the breakdown in terms of what political parties people here in the United States are a part of. It turns out that most of the distributors in the direct and live community, over 65%, identified themselves as being Democrats. Then we had the Republicans came in at around 20%. It was interesting because we also had the Tea Party separated themselves during this poll or during this survey period. They came in at around 5%. Then we had the Libertarians and the Independents. So what we figured that we would do, that we being direct selling live, was really up the ante in terms of creating something for community engagement. So last night, Direct Selling Live launched Direct Selling Live Politics. As I said, it's a huge upgrade. This time around, we're going to have up to eight bloggers who are going to talk about politics, what's going on from January all the way through the end of November so that you get a sense of what a direct seller is thinking. We've got Avon Top Distributor Lisa Wilbur, who's representing the Libertarian Party. The Tea Party is representing being represented by Kelly Foote. We have Soul Purpose Lifestyle Distributor Ruth Webster, who is representing the independents. And we also, at this current time, have Gene Bronstein, who's representing the liberal progressive movement. Just so you know, we're still looking for four more bloggers. A number of people have asked, but they just haven't measured up. They haven't met the criteria that we're looking for. We really want a mainstream Republican and a mainstream Democrat. I don't know that you could find anyone that really fits that bill anymore. I mean, the lines of the vision are just so intense. It's, it's, it's just really, really difficult, especially on the Republican side. You get, you know, uh, you get chewed up, it seems, these days if you say that you're a, a moderate. It's, it's just really, really interesting. We're also looking for an Occupy blogger. 
If you're someone who is all about the Occupy movement, we would love to get your take on what the Occupy movement means to direct sellers. And last, we're also looking for a youth or young adult blogger. With Direct Sunday Live Politics 2012, what the bloggers are going to be doing, this is something you want to keep in mind if you're interested in doing it. They're going to be submitting blogs to us every few days, and we're going to upload them onto their custom pages. You can actually go to Direct Sunday Live Politics right now, and you can click on the links to Lisa Wilbur or Gene Bronstein, Kelly Foote, or Ruth Webster. They're going to be submitting blogs, written blogs, and a few times each month, they're also going to be submitting video blogs. It's going to be interesting from Lisa Wilbur because she is a seasoned politician. She's run for political office six times in New Hampshire. She has yet to win. However, running six times qualifies her as someone who's debated, who's actually spoken in public about her views and getting people to vote for her. She is a, a politician and, as I said, one of the top distributors for Avon here in the United States. They just had... New Hampshire just had their primary last night. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how quickly she sends in a blog after the primary. It, as a, it, it's funny, as a libertarian, she ended up having a Ron Paul sign in her front yard. Ron Paul, who's really a libertarian, but actually is running as a Democrat, rather, excuse me, is actually running as a Republican. So I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what Lisa has to say. She also mentioned something about this on her page because she actually submitted a video already. As a community member for direct selling, you're going to be able to not only read and be able to watch and hopefully follow these people, you're actually going to be able to engage. You're going to be able to submit comments on what you think they're saying. And it's our hope that you not only submit comments, you challenge them, keep the anger to a minimum. We're really looking to... I make sure that the proper language is in place. You know, we can't have any cussing. We, we can't have any name calling, anything like that. We really have to monitor that and make it as civil as possible, sort of with the understanding that it is a presidential election season. There are a lot of dynamics here at play, more so than just about any other election in the history of the United States. So, you know, as they say, we want to keep the vitriol at a minimum. This is a great opportunity for us here in Direct Selling. It's a wonderful opportunity to get the world to understand us, to see that we are a major voting bloc, because in fact, that's what we are. We are represented by tens of millions of distributors here in the United States and around the world, and yet with all of that, we've never had a voice politically from a distributor standpoint. The companies have, and they've had for decades, as we reported in December, the Direct Selling Association has a political action committee. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that until the uh, middle of last year, that the Direct Selling Association, DSA, has a political action committee they don't want distributors to know about. Conversation with Neil Offen after, excuse me, with Joe Mariano after we ran the story, said he would love for distributors to know more about it, to get more engaged in uh, uh, the political conversation, because that will help the DSA uh, create a, 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 a much more effective voice in the pe public policy debate. They can't do it by themselves. They need us to get involved. Whether you agree with the DSA's position is, at this time, irrelevant. What is important is that you get involved, that you get involved in the conversation. And that's where Direct Selling Live comes in. Direct Selling Live is the only media in Direct Selling that has put anything in place. In fact, we're the only company in Direct Selling that has put anything in place that even comes close to talking about politics. Here, we think politics plays a very, very important role in who we are. If you look at the DeVos family over Amway, they're heavily involved in the Republican Party. they one of the largest soft money donors that have been for years. And if we look at Donald Trump, his involvement and what he's constantly trying to do, position himself as a rainmaker in the Republican Party, you've got the Trump network. So. Not only that, there are a number of direct selling company owners who, who, who get heavily involved in looking at the DSA's uh, filings for the political action committee. You see where uh, Mary Kay is all involved. You see where OxyFresh is involved. You see, of course, 
where Herbalife and Zango and a number of others are just heavily involved in, in, in donating money to politicians. The Direct Selling Live Politics 2012 is all about you. It's all about you, the distributor or customer, wanting to engage, to raise your voice so that this particular segment of direct selling has a voice. So politicians listen to us. In doing the, the poll last year and also in 2008 when we found that the majority of distributors are are uh, on the Democrat side, it was interesting that we found that a number or the majority of the owners are from the Republican side of the fence. Which raises the question, whose needs are being met when the DSA goes and lobbies? Because in fact, that's what the DSA is. They're a lobbying. There are a bunch of lawyers over there, so they lobby. But whose needs are being met or whose needs are being addressed? Are they the company owners personally or are they addressing the needs of the distributors? I think it's a little of both. I think mostly it is being addressed for the company owners because if it was going to be addressed for the distributors, they would figure out a way to get distributors involved in the process. They haven't, so distributors aren't funneling any money to them even though they can't do that and DSA President Joe Mariano said they can't and they can't even come after distributors to let them know about it, but there are ways of going about it through funneling information to the companies who can then pass it on to distributors to let them know what's going on and keep them abreast of current events. Direct Sunday Life Politics, as I said, it is for you. It is for our community. We are going to be on this from here on out. Know that Direct Selling Live and On Air and a number of other things uh, uh, with Direct Selling Live are going to be about getting you well aware of what's going on. What you do with the information is totally up to you. We're going to try to keep it as unbiased as possible. But it's an, it's an exciting time. For the first time ever, Direct Selling Distributors will have a voice. What makes that e even more interesting is... Uh, as On Air began to break stories about Avon's troubles and about the Amway's uh, uh, issue, the Amway family, uh, represented by the DeVos family, uh, Direct Sound Life came under attack last week. Uh, we had uh, hackers uh, come in and shut us down for about four days. Typically, uh, people don't hack you unless they are threatened by you. So I guess on the one hand... Um, we should be flattered, uh, but on the other hand, it was totally disruptive uh, of the business. But I think what that speaks to is your power to speak up and Direct Selling Live presenting a platform for you to make your voices heard. We will continue to march forward. We are not going to let anything stop us. And so as Direct Selling Live politics continues to go forward, I'm sure we'll get some blowback from a number of other people and organizations. But as I said, this is all about you. It's all about you raising your voice and creating a much stronger voice here in Direct Selling. Go to Direct Selling Life Politics right now. Take a look around. Uh, have a good time. Read what they have to say because as this process, the Direct Selling Life pol Politics, goes on further and further into the year, we will be redesigning, we will be reshaping it and massaging the whole process so we make it easier and a lot more engaging for you. When I come back, we're going to talk about the upcoming special report on Direct Selling Live next week. Direct Selling Skin. Race. Indirect Selling. It's only skin deep. I'll be right back. When my mother used to sell Princess House. Join them way that night. Norma siempre vendía cosas de Avon. Oh, it must have been around 1935. But those knives were amazing. The one lady's name was Mary Kay, and I said, oh, cosmetics will never sell on Party Plan. I uh, was a single mom and created these hair care products for black women and became the first self-made millionaire in the United States. I just think that's extraordinary. I was recently on a blog for Jennifer Fong, the, one of the social media uh, gurus here in direct selling. I was reading some of her comments about politics and what people should and should not do as it relates to their Facebook pages and things like this, all their social media pages, where she was saying people should not talk about politics and religion at all. I think there's a 
time and a place for that in your direct selling business. I think there's a time and a place for that even with your blogs, especially as we cannot get away from the fact that our politics in direct selling and our politics in the United States is having tremendous impact on who we are and what we think and what our values are. It seems as though every single day we are having to redefine who we are and what we stand for. And it's not so much us, the individual, it's primarily being driven by two groups, the politicians and those people who put money or back the politicians. They are trying to redefine what the values are here in the United States for not only politicians, but for everyone on the ground, everyone in, in their homes. Politics and religion can be two very explosive topics, can be very divisive conversations that you can have because most people cannot separate that. It's just a conversation. They can't separate that from what their personal feelings are to the point that they, 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 they just really get upset about it. There's another topic that is just as explosive that we don't talk about much here in direct selling, certainly here in the United States, and that's the issue of race. Race, as we look at direct selling, is very different here in the United States than it is in other countries. Direct selling is represented by so many different ethnic groups, and so many different ethnic groups have had a major hand in shaping the United States from black Americans to white Americans to uh, uh, brown Americans to yellow, you name it, and just to keep, you know, with the, with the color theme. And yet, it seems as though we cannot have a civil conversation here in direct selling about it. In looking at the upcoming report, which is going to be out on the 16th, I believe it's Tuesday, no, excuse me, it's, it's going to be Monday, the day we celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday, because his birthday is actually on Sunday. So on the 16th, Monday, Direct Selling Live is going to have this special report called Direct Selling Skin, Race and Direct Selling. Because we're going to maybe do this over two to three weeks, where we really look at race and direct selling. We're going to engage a number of different direct selling leaders, racial uh, 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 racial leaders, people who are also, how, how do I say this, uh, people from different racial backgrounds there, people from different racial backgrounds, to so get their take on what they think the race issue is like in direct selling. My personal experience in direct selling with race has been a pretty interesting one. I got into direct selling in 1995, and one of the first things I did, I ran down to Costa Mesa, California to go to an MLMIA conference. And I saw nothing but a lot of white people, even after being told that direct selling is full of, of minorities. And during one of the breakout sessions, I asked the question, where are all the minorities? And uh, one of the leaders there who was actually conducting the conference just said to me, well, they're welcome. So that was kind of off-putting. It's like, wow. And then as the company I was with became uh, pretty successful, and I was a very successful distributor, a very good friend of mine who happened to be in another organization, I asked her, she was a little older than I am, I asked her uh, after I had risen uh, to a, a, a pretty prominent level, I said, let me ask you this. If you had met me on the street, would you have approached me? And she did not hesitate and said no. And I asked, why, why wouldn't you do that? She said, well, because we don't have anything in common. I said, well, what are you talking about? I've known you now for three years, and you could say, even after knowing me after three years, that granted you didn't think we had anything in common when we first met, but now you've come to know me, and you still don't think we have much in common. She said, no, other than being with this company, no, we don't have much in common. I said, well, what is it that you think we don't have in common? The first thing she said, well, you're black. Well, yeah, what did I have to do with anything? You wouldn't approach me because I'm black? And she said, of course. I never would have approached you because you were black. What is that? What's, what's the issue there? Well, I just didn't think that you being black meant that there wasn't anything that we could talk about. Well, there's a lot that we could talk about, of course, but I thought it was really interesting that she would say without hesitation that I would never approach you because you were black. 
it is this type of conversation, it is this kind of mindset that I want to begin to explore with race and direct selling, direct selling skin. So the report will come out on Monday the 16th, kind of losing it here, on Monday the 16th, uh, the celebration of Martin Luther King's birthday, which I think is pretty apropos. Look for the report. It's going to be a video series that will take place over the course of three weeks, where we look at race and direct selling, race from a distributor standpoint, race from a company standpoint, and race from an association standpoint. That's our show for today. Have a fantastic day. Remember, or in case you don't know, on Friday, we're going to have special guests. Janine Avila will be in to talk about women in the boardroom. In 2011, Direct Selling Live did a major poll and survey on women in the boardroom. And come to find out that of all the movement that is taking place in direct selling, 70% of all the promotions, 77% of all the promotions go to men. And 85% of all the distributors on the ground are women. And you put those two together, what do you get? 23% of all the executives in direct selling are men. Cannot be. Janine Avila is the ex-vice president of OxyFresh in 2110 and has also been in corporate at a number of other companies. She's going to talk about, and she has strong opinions, but she's going to talk about women in the boardroom on Friday here on On Air. Have a great day.